Hi y'all, welcome back to the garden. So I've got some exciting stuff to show you this video. The first thing I wanted to start right here at all of these tulips. I posted a picture on Instagram earlier in the week and these had just started blooming. They are so gorgeous. Some of them have already bloomed and they're kind of going out like these white ones here. Some of them are a little further behind, like these have barely just started blooming. I love these yellows. These I'm not a huge fan of, but they're still really pretty. And this one right here is kind of an orange, pink, really nice. But anyway, I want to show you a few things I got done over the past week. One of those is I went to Natorp's uh, last Saturday, I think it was. I was kind of looking around just because they had just opened um, for the season. And I was just wanting to see what the variety was right now. Not a whole lot of annuals out yet at that time. Of course, we still have a good while until our last projected frost, although I've looked at the calendar and we don't have any frost on the um, weather for another two weeks is what it says. But this is Ohio, so it could change tomorrow. I did pick up a lollipop crab apple. Now, I'm really hesitant about crab apples. Uh, there was one at the front of the house when we moved in here that I removed probably three or four years ago. It was bordering mine and my neighbor's property and it had rotted almost from the stem or the trunk itself and was just falling apart. You could kick it and some of the trunk pieces would fall off. So I pulled that out a couple years ago because it wasn't doing great. They tend to sometimes get diseases, but I wanted another one in the garden. And since I've got a lot of stuff already in the garden, adding one somewhere now um, is not such a big deal. So this is Lollipop. It is a J. Frank Schmidt bread tree. It's proven winners, branded as well. You can see it here, but it stays rather small, eight foot wide, and it can be pruned on and shaped into like a topiary type form. So that's what I'm gonna do with it here. So you can see all of these daffodils. I don't think that were blooming in the last video that have come up. And it will just be a nice upward structure right here that I can keep rounded. You can actually see it's already getting some blooms on it here or some buds and it will be blooming out in the next couple weeks. So I'm really excited about that. I picked it up last Saturday and I think it got it, I got it planted sometime this past week. Um, and I just really wanted some up, upward structure there. So directly under it, which I have since cut down, you can kind of see the stems here on the ground. Those are hibiscus. And so they'll come up later in the season. They're slow to get started. If you have hibiscus, perennial hibiscus in your garden, just know they don't like it, don't like the weather until it gets pretty warm. And so I went ahead and ch cut those down and they'll start popping up here in a while. So we'll have kind of some nice mounded round structures here, but I wanted something with a little more height in front of these evergreens. And so I think that'll be a nice uh, structure and component that it can be kind of formally trimmed into a ball as we go on. So I placed it kind of a little bit further back in the bed because I already had this boxwood here that'll be shaped into a sphere as it continues to grow. I went through and cut back a lot of my roses. A lot of them had a lot of damage from winter, so you can see the landscape roses here. I can't remember the name of these. I'll have to tell you after they bloom. It's escaping me right now, but I had to cut them back quite severely because they were... Um, the stems had died back quite a bit during the winter that we had, the really, really cold weather. So, as you know, I took very um, good precautions. I sprayed my pruners with isopropyl alcohol in between each shrub that I pruned. I'm not quite finished with all the roses. These uh, double, oh so easy double pink roses that are back here in this bed have not gotten to yet. The rabbits ate them down a little bit, but some of them still have like buds and stuff from last year or rose hips that need to be cut off just for a little cleaner look. We've got lots of alliums popping up. I did come through and cut down the liriope with with the string trimmer or the weed eater and lots of things blooming. I'm loving how the daffodils look in the backyard this year. I kind of spaced them out here and there in sections, but really pretty and really lovely, just in groupings. And then we have this lamium that started blooming in the past week too. So I moved some hostas back here from the front that I'll show you where those came from later. We've got some random hellebores that I planted in the garden. 
lots of weeds, of course. And so this weekend's going to be uh, some mulching I think I'm going to try and get done. Um, I don't know how much I'll get done. I'm not ready to mulch all of my flower beds. And I typically don't get to a lot of mulching until May. But we have had so much rain over winter that it has washed a lot of my mulch like heavy, heavy downfalls, not just drizzles, like monsoons of rain. And it has washed away a lot of my mulch this year. You can see how bad it is here. There's essentially no mulch and we're getting all of these weeds and that's washed the mulch all the way down through the yard, through this flower bed. And it's actually creating some uh, washing of the dirt that needs to be addressed pretty quickly but there's all sorts of weeds in here because of this all winter and because the temperatures weren't incredibly cold we had those warm areas in january it was the perfect combination of allowing weeds to grow because the ground was not covered because if you don't cover the ground mother nature will cover it for you this weekend I'm also going to come through and uncover my dahlias. Like I said, it's not anticipated really to get below freezing in the next couple weeks. If it does, they'll be fine because they're still in the ground. But I'm going to go ahead and get these cut uncovered so they can get cleaned up. We have some really pretty daffodils that I'm going to be sticking out front after I get more of the perennials planted. They were here temporarily um, until I was able to finish the front beds and I didn't want to keep them over winter because they would probably desiccate it and not done very well. So those will be going up front probably after I finish putting the perennials in the ground. I'll just transplant them uh, after they start blooming as they come through. And that way I can use, remove that and then put the raised bed that I'm going to be putting there back in its spot. Like I mentioned, the grass desperately needs to be cut. So I may be doing that today or tomorrow. And something I have never seen this early in my garden are the limelight hydrangeas pushing buds they were doing it in march and so i went ahead and come through and prune these trees i didn't get that on video for you uh, but i am going to show you how i'm going to be pruning some of these other hydrangeas in a separate video limelights i typically don't prune these till probably late april early may because they do not show buds this early ever in my garden it was so early that I wanted to get them pruned because it was either last year or the year before that I waited a little too long and um, I set back the blooming quite a bit because you want to start getting these pruned as soon as they start pushing growth. If you wait, you're just wasting that energy that the plant's sending to all those limbs that you're going to cut off. So these I cut off and you can see how I did them in a nice sphere here. So you generally want to remove anything that is smaller than a pencil so like this little branch right here could be removed any of these little things off to the side here that i may have missed now this is how i prune my standard hydrangeas which standard just means tree form i have seen people cut them down much worse than this and every time i see someone prune them much deeper into the form it makes me cringe now not to say that you can't but limelights don't have the strongest stems. And if you prune them way down, you're losing all this super woody, strong growth here that will hold the blooms up. Now these are gonna droop regardless if they get a lot of rain on them. I've showed you videos before where those will droop if that happens, but you want to leave really strong, tough branches. Now that's not to say you have to remove all the small stuff. Like this is a really small stem right here that could be removed. It's got a nice green bud at the end of it. But if you remove all the branches this size, that is your wood in the future. This will thicken up this year uh, and become nice and thicker and look more like this next year. So keep that in mind. Don't necessarily cut off everything that's really tiny, but you also want to leave some things an opportunity to get thicker so you can have this nice rounded structure going into future years. So I try, since I have one on the other side right there, to kind of mirror the size and shape of them. This one is more of a perfectly kind of round symmetrical shape. The one over here is missing a bit on the back. And so you can kind of see it's like empty there, but that's all right. We've got lots of other stuff in here to provide interest and grow on and perennials that still need cut back. Still a lot to do, I'm really behind. Now, since I pruned the limelights, I also went ahead and pruned the incredible hydrangea hedge. 
I didn't do a video on that either because I've done a video on that before. I think I've done two videos on it, one last year maybe and one the year before. Uh, but this is what they look like right now. So you can see how I need to desperately come through and put some mulch down on this bed too. I don't think I mulched this bed at all last year. Um, and you can definitely tell, but you can see how I pruned these. I left the cage here. I added these last year. I'm going to show you how to make some of these. And I'm actually going to be running to the local Menards to buy some more uh, of these metal rods to make some supports to kind of go around the edge. Because Incrediball is an improvement of Annabelle, which is an old timey hydrangea, but it still tends to flop. Uh, especially on this north side of the house. If it had a little more sun, it may be a little stronger stems. You can see some of the stems are pretty strong. And I did cut out at the base here some that were really uh, forward facing. Because these are up against a wall, they tend to want to lean out a little bit. So I did that along all of them, just kind of cut down the stems that were at the very front. And you can see their mid-thigh height on me if I stand here. You can see where the stems are right here. So if you're interested in how to prune your Annabelle or smooth type hydrangeas, is what they're called, hydrangea arborescence, then search my channel for pruning the Incredible Hydrangea Hedge. And if I remember, I will link it below. And it's really easy. Uh, some of them I do a little more finessing on than others. Same thing here. You generally want to cut out anything that is smaller than a pencil size thick but it doesn't have to be perfect so just do what you can some people just come through with head shears and trim them off that if that works for you that's fine some people prune them in the fall i don't tend to do that because i think it's nice to be able to see where the buds are in the spring that way you can prune directly above the buds so you can see the bud there but there, prune directly above them this is not pruning techniques for macrophylla. I've mentioned in the past several videos because I don't want you pruning your macrophylla as the spring because you'll risk cutting off those buds. So make sure you know what type of hydrangea you're pruning before you start the pruning process. And this right now is quite a bit of mess. I came through and dug up my wee white hydrangeas and some hostas and gave them to one of my old co-workers uh, for her garden. And I got in all of these um, Arborvitae that I showed you before. These are Mr. Bowling Ball, and I have seven of them spaced kind of around the edge here. Uh, they will get three to four foot tall and wide, and eventually they'll come like kind of close to the edge here. You can see I've got to come back and level out the soil. We had lots of rain after I did that this week where all the hydrangeas, the wee whites, and the hostas were. But I really love this ferny texture. I need to move this hosta too. I forgot about it. But there's some perennials in here that are going to get moved around to the backyard. And I left them to do that probably this weekend sometime. I moved some of the shrubs that were in here back into the raised beds temporarily until I can find a spot for those in the landscape. And this right here, I absolutely love how this looked. I showed you this boxwood uh, several weeks ago when I picked it up. It's a Green Mountain boxwood topiary uh, I picked up from Natorps and I planted it right here on the corner. I think it's going to be really, really lovely. Behind that we have a macrophylla hydrangea by Monrovia called Seaside Serenade Newport. And we'll see this year, this one was in the ground last year, how hardy its buds are. Uh, I'm going to guess at this point, since I don't see any buds leafing out, that it did not do a very good job. This one grows on, or blooms on new wood and old wood, so we should still get blooms on it this year. That'll be something we're testing, but none of the buds from last year are showing any growth. They all look really dead, so... For purposes of my garden right now, I don't know that these are going to be a good choice in zone 6 unless they bloom incredibly quickly and you still get spring buds. So we'll have to see that. You can see all the new growth here at the bottom. All of these buds right here are toast, pretty much. Behind there, immediately behind, is a Golden Shadows Dogwood by Proven Winners. Now, that thing gets pretty big. It grows really, really slow. But I thought it would be a nice little textural element to kind of drape around this area um, 
I didn't like some shade and I don't have a really good spot for it otherwise. So I moved it a little bit. It was kind of here. I moved this hydrangea over and that dogwood back to kind of fill this gap here. So it'll grow up, be nice, both color contrast to the red obelisk beach here and all of these gorgeous hydrangeas around it. Under this, we're going to be planting some grasses that I'm getting in that I'll show in a separate video. Really incredibly excited about those and how this will look. And then I got to come through and move these arborvitae to somewhere else in the garden as we start to renovate in this garden space, which I've talked about several times. So this still looks kind of rough in here. Lots of cleanup to do, lots of mulching to do. I think this is to the point though that I can probably start fixing the drip in this area um, and then mulching it for now until my annuals come in in May. So once again, this looks kind of a mess right now, but a lot of you said you wanted to see the process and this is the process. And since I have a regular day job and I can only work on the weekends and in the afternoons after work, the nice thing is we're getting some longer days and I can get out here a little longer for a couple hours after work. I've been able to get all of this done this week, but still a lot to do. Next step is drip, then mulch. But I'm going to try and pick up some mulch this week, this weekend, because this bed, I don't really have any plans to do anything in and it can already go ahead and be mulched. And I want to get the mulch done as soon as I can before any more of these perennials start poking out of the ground. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this bed right here that I sh took you along in the last video. And I got these boxwoods planted that I really love. Um, I wasn't sure how this was going to look, but I'm really excited about how it turned out. I sent Soil and Margaritas an Instagram message before I actually pulled the dirt over these boxwoods. And I was like, how does this look? And she was like, eh, what are you going to plant under it? Uh, and then I messaged some other people and they thought it was cute. So I'm sticking with it right now. It is a topiary in multiple heights. I do need to come through and trim this one into more of a ball. And so that's planted kind of close to this one, as you can see, but it's going to be trimmed a little tighter here so it can be a three step so small a little taller tallest and then under planting it i'm going to plant some of the grasses that are coming in probably some hakanakloa potentially i already have some hakanakloa here uh, and this is i think that's the yellow hakanakloa i have some coming in called lemon zest that would look really good under there i think and also my bare root perennials came in this week. So the next video, uh, I am going to be planting those in here. You can see I had to cut some drip out. It's gonna be really fun to redo the drip in this area. That was sarcasm. This will be ready for mulch too after I plant the perennials this weekend, transition some of those daffodils that I showed you to this bed, because I did plant a few this year in certain spaces here. But I got all the hostas out of here, all of the, ferns that were planted underneath. Look at these daffodils. I love this. And I still have things coming in from Proven Winners and first edition shrubs that may go in this area. So it may be a little early to completely mulch this area, but I may go ahead and mulch and save a few bags so I can plant stuff in, the, in May and then remulch over the stuff I plant just so I can get some things done. Mulching is my least favorite task in the garden. It's probably most people's least favorite task, but at one, it's necessary to protect your plants. It's a good investment for your soil, but it's just not, not a task that I like to do. I like to plant. Uh, I like to see plants, work with plants. Mulching is just not, not it for me. Speaking of plants, I was getting really concerned that my lavender hedge did not make it through winter because it looks really crispy and typically it would be showing some more growth by now. But I did start seeing some growth here in select stages so I can come down and cut this down a little more. You can actually see a lot of green that way. And so this is the first year that I kind of preemptively prune some of my lavender down during winter. Typically I leave it standing all winter, but it holds leaves really bad. You can see it's still holding a little bit of leaves if I left it completely tall. So I half pruned it in the fall and then I will come back and prune it closer to the ground. You can see where I prune it usually back in here with all that growth that's cut down there. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that too within the next week so we can get this ready and any new growth that pushes will be this nice soft green. 
I haven't noticed quite yet other than one shrub which was already struggling any plants that I lost over winter everything seems to be showing a little signs of growth there's still some stuff because it is so early like this bobo hydrangea doesn't have any buds on it yet which that's why I said it was so odd to see limelight pushing buds already because it's usually pretty late but these other panicles are coming out too the bobos just are well we got a little bit of bud swelling right there there's a little bit of green I don't know if you can see it right there so those I've got to come through and finish pruning as well the temperature this year uh, is just heating up quicker than I can handle uh, maintaining the garden so I'm going to get out and let you go I'm going to shoot some video about the perennials that I'm going to be planting up front this weekend that I just went over uh, and where and how I'm going to arrange those but I need to do some general cleanup like cutting the grass before we can do that thank you guys for joining me and remember in a world full of hate be a light take care everyone bye